Luke 6, 6 through 11, tells a story of Jesus healing a man with a withered hand. I love this story for so many reasons. One is that it was done on the Sabbath day. While the Pharisees longed to believe that no work could be done on the Sabbath day, especially healing, Jesus steps on the scene and he rewrites the narrative. In fact, we see Jesus healing on all kinds of days, but the Sabbath themselves tends to be what Charles Spurgeon calls the holy high days of grace. There are six special cases recorded in scripture that attest to this. And this one, this story, is the story of the withered hand. The organ withered here is the hand, the hand the organ of touch, the one that brings us into a deeper and closer connection than any other organ that we possess. We can see with our eyes and we can hear with our ears, but there's something that is more experiential about feeling. It's the proof that the matter actually exists. This man's hand was withered. While he had all faculties complete, he had lost his ability to deeply connect through the manner of touch. And no coincidence, the hand that was withered was his right hand, notably the one that was likely the better and more serviceable between the two. To a certain extent, he was able to feel, but it was only with his weaker and most likely his less perceptive one. Another special note here is that the way in which the hand was affected Scriptures tell us that it was withered. It wasn't severed, it wasn't cut off, it wasn't missing altogether. Rather, it was still a part of the man's original design. However, it remained lifeless. Disease had ill-affected this once useful body part, and now it remained powerless beside him. And what I believe to be a miraculous discovery about this story is that nothing in the text tells us that this man was a renewed man or even that this man sought healing from the healer. Verse 6 explains simply that there was a man with a deformed right hand. A man with a deformed right hand who was present in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. And yet we see Jesus do something that not only displayed his great power, but also changed the religious mindsets of the Pharisees, whose belief in strict law superseded their relational connection to the one sent by the Father to redeem. Jesus then invites the man with the withered hand to come and stand in front of everyone in verse 8. Verse 10 tells us that he, Jesus, looked around at them, the Pharisees, one by one, and he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. Jesus had a very unique reputation for placing human needs above Sabbath commands. And he had a special ability to see human limitations and generate healing even when the recipient wasn't even fully aware of their need for restoration. Jesus calls on the man to stand in front of everyone. He didn't shy away from controversy if it meant soul revival. And this wasn't an emergency by any means. This was a man with a withered hand, a man with a fairly ordinary dysfunction, and yet Jesus used it as a means for demonstrating his power and his authority, even in those small, unrequested circumstances. I would bet that this withered hand serve as a constant reminder to the man of his lack, his inability, his inadequacy, I would bet it proved to be inconvenient and certainly it was restrictive. And Jesus in his kindness and in his grace sees the need and he offers a solution, a divine solution. The same way he sees, sees our needs 
and he offers to us a divine solution. Many of us, too, are lugging around with this disability that we're far too aware of, a shameful burden, a disgraceful hardship. But hope is to be discovered for us, too. This story is proof that no one is disqualified for recovery, not even those who refuse to ask for help, not even those who believe that their time for good works and serviceable duties has long passed. The hand was only withered, it wasn't wasted. The, what, it was only a withered hand. It was only withered because it had yet to receive its power from on high for the tasks it was originally purposed for. God is the God of healing, the God of healing and restoration. He is a miracle-working God who sees what is broken and stands ready, willing, and able to redeem, repair, reestablish, and revive. Though the hand is withered, it is not wasted.